It's the award-winning Beyond Vaudeville program with your host, Frank Hope, and your co-host, David Green, and very special guest star, Joyce Randolph, and funny man, Jackie Jason, exit, and Samson St. Clair as Joan Rivers, and lots of surprises, phone to us, 675-RAT. Okay. Uh Thank you very much, uh, David, for uh, giving us uh, the who's on the show tonight. And uh, once again, welcome to the Beyond Vaudeville program. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, as you can see, we have some very special, very, very special uh, guest stars tonight and surprises, so stick around. Uh, uh, David, uh, since uh, uh, he was doing that iced tea thing with the sugar on the show, uh, it feels that he should uh, keep doing this uh, sugar thing to irritate me, and I'm not going to let him uh, get to me by doing it. So if he wants to keep doing it, then that's his problem, and I'm just going to ignore it and, and continue on with the show. Uh, we want to talk about some special things that have been going on lately. Uh, oatmeal, Mr. Green. Okay, well now it's going to be oatmeal instead of iced tea. Well, it's not any, uh, you're still not getting me, David. We were mentioned in uh, Cracked Magazine, uh, for our live uh, stage show that we did uh, with, uh, uh, we had a Adam uh, Batman West at our stage show and, and that was in uh, the, you know, that's not funny, David. Uh, okay, also we had a, uh, uh, another uh, uh, guest, uh, Danny Bonaducci from the Partridge family was at another one of our uh, stage shows. And, uh, they had, and we have a picture of him there. Uh, also, uh, a good uh, a good new book I found recently that I recommend, and uh, it may be out of print, but it's uh, uh, Richard Dawson and, and Family Feud, and it's a whole book about the uh, Family Feud uh, uh, program that's not on anymore, but uh, it was a good uh, show when it was on. Okay, also, uh, Tiddlywinks, uh, 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 recently got a, a tiddlywinks game and uh, I don't know if, if they're making these anymore either but uh, uh, I like tiddlywinks very much and, and you probably will too if you uh, if you play them and, and remember what it was like uh, okay also uh, the uh, sunny cocoa puffs uh, uh, backpack um, uh, was uh, I, this this you can find and it's the guy with the uh, cereal uh, uh, with the Cocoa Puffs. Uh, also, there's the uh, uh, rock, uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling uh, backpack that you can hold all your things in when you go out. And also, uh, there, there's so many things today. The uh, Rabbi Ben dashboard uh, that you hang from your window, it's a uh, it's a, a rabbi instead of one of those uh, green tree things. Okay. Um, well, oh, David, isn't that great now? You're eating all that sugar. Well, I hope you enjoy it, and that's all going to catch up with you someday. Uh, okay. Well, I, I guess we should bring out our first, uh, our first guest, who a very special uh, one. I'm sure you'll uh, uh, remember from uh, the honeymooners. Uh, and, uh, and uh, the other is her husband, uh, who uh, is uh, very prominent uh, in the uh, theater world. And please welcome uh, Joyce Randolph and Mr. Dick Charles, please, to the Beyond Vaudeville program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Frank, safe to see you. There's your mic there. My little, my little clip on. Now, let's see. I don't have a collar, but I guess this will work I hope that, okay that will suffice yes this uh, this is a very special day for us because um, uh, we've had uh, some some famous people on the show but uh, you are uh, very famous uh, to us we uh, grew up watching <laughs> the uh, the honeymooners and uh, and we saw it, uh, just recently that uh, they named a, a Ralph Cramden bus terminal in, in New York, right in here. In Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. And you were there. And, the uh, Jackie Gleason bus depot. Jackie Gleason mm -hmm. bus terminal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, uh, a lot of people know you from the Honeymooners, uh, 
but uh, there were other things in your career that uh, that you did as an actress. You did uh, yeah. theater and uh, lots uh, of early television. Early television. How how when did you start? Uh, oh my, uh, 1947. 47, so. It was early television. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, back uh, when they just had the black and white and uh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Milton Berle and, and uh, uh -huh. all those those uh -huh. things. And now you two both met uh, in, the, in the early days of TV, right? Uh, yes. Yes, we, we met, uh, as a matter of fact, at the Cordial Bar and Grill and Bar. <laughs> Uh, which was next door to the studio where we did the, the Jackie Gleason show, which is now called the Ed Sullivan Theater at Broadway and 52nd or 53rd, but it was just called, what, Studio 52 in those days, but now it's the Ed Sullivan Theater, and the Cordial Bar and Grill was right next door, and they would send food and drink, perhaps, to Mr. Gleason, and some of us would uh, go there at 9 o'clock on Saturday night. Now, get some food. There are a lot of stories that Mr. Gleason uh, was uh, was quite a drinker. He could really uh, hold his own uh, at uh, at parties with with others. And uh, yes, at parties, he certainly did not drink on the show. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, uh, in in order to prepare to be uh, Art Carney's uh, wife, um, how how did you do that? Did uh, did you work out how you would work with him or? Uh, uh, it just sort of happened and evolved slowly. It, it didn't have to work anything out. It, it just, uh, we started back on uh, Dumont Channel 5 right. you know, before we were at CBS. So this was way back in 1950 that we started. And uh, I had done a serious sketch with Jackie. And he, uh, then when the part of Trixie was written in for uh, Art Carney to have a wife, uh, Jackie Gleason said to the casting man, just, just get me that serious actress. He, he couldn't think of my name because he had, didn't know me that well. We hardly ever rehearse or anything with him because he doesn't like to rehearse. But he, uh, he asked the casting man to get him that serious actress for Trixie, and I so I just started, you know, just fell into it that way and, and uh, continued playing it. For so you were years. like a straight woman to. Uh... Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, didn't have too many comedy lines. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you ever rehearse it at home? Did you wear a vest and, and do those, those <laughs> funny moves? Or? I wore a vest with three-piece suits. You know? <laughs> and, very uh, formal and, <laughs> and very nice. Now, I, I mentioned uh, that, that you're in a very prominent in the theater. You're with an organization, The Lambs. Uh, the Lambs Club, uh, which uh, was founded in 1880 uh, by uh, Mr. Montague who uh, was in this country from doing a show uh, uh, from England. And uh, in the old days in England, why, uh, actors weren't too well thought of, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, a group of people uh, used to get around, uh, go around to uh, Mary Lamb's place. Charles and Mary Lamb. Charles and Mary Lamb's place, because they uh, were artistic and they liked uh, theatrical people. And uh, when Montague met a few of his friends uh, here at Delmonico's uh, in New York, he said it sure would be nice to have a place like the Lambs. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, started the club, uh, and uh, it's survived for 106 years. And there, there are people in the in theater and uh, Yes, and theater, and, and rela in theater, directors, producers, actors, singers, dancers. So maybe uh, Dave and I can join sometime. Well, I certainly would love to have you. But Dave probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to do that, uh, eating all that sugar, uh, Dave. Well, no, well, he no. may not live long enough to, uh, <laughs> to join. Yeah, I don't think that would go over too yeah. well in, in uh, polite company. Uh, now, you, you both uh, also are regulars at Sardi's. Uh, you mentioned that you've been there, going there for several years, and... Uh, yeah, 35 years I've had my charge account there. Uh. And, and, uh, and if people uh, in New York go to Sardi's, they'll see you right up on the, on the wall there? They, <laughs> yes, up over the bar are the four caricatures. Not of, you, uh, but the... the no, the caricatures <laughs> that were drawn up of Jackie and Audrey and Art and me. I, I'm on the right end. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so do both of you, uh, are you still involved in, in uh, TV at all or uh, charities? What uh, type of uh, work do you do now uh, in 
Well, we have our clubs. Besides just being the shepherd of the lambs, you were also members of the Players Club down in Gramercy Park, and you belong to what the Advertising Club and and uh, the Dutch Street Club, and and he has his good job, his position, and we're always busy. I don't know what what we're doing, but we're always busy. Well, we're we're glad you found the time to to come on here and and talk with us uh, a bit and join us. Um, we're we're supposed to have on. Uh, a comedian that uh, we'd, we'd like to, to bring out and have him do uh, uh, his routine. Uh, anyone uh, from the Catskills uh, uh, or, or who has been to the Catskills will recognize uh, Jackie Jason Exit, and he's going to do some of his uh, routine for us right now, please. Uh, Jackie Jason Exit. Well, wow, that's a pleasure. Frank Hope, I thought for me there would be no hope altogether, I'll be honest with you. Because this morning, would you believe me, before I came down here, I was mugged on 79th Street. The guy says, give me your money. I says, I already gave it on 14th Street. It's ridiculous with the crime that's going on in New York City. I'll be honest, I live in the Bronx. I live in the Bronx in a very quiet neighborhood. At night, you're going to scream. It's the police calling for help. <laughs> When I first moved into the neighborhood, I asked the, my landlady, I says, where's the nearest subway? She says, I don't know. Nobody ever made it yet. <laughs> so what do you think I did? I bought myself a police dog for protection. It's a police dog. He wears a badge. He thought that I was a bone. He tried to bury me. It's a police dog. He's afraid of the dark. It's a German dog. That's right. It's a German dog. He found out I was Jewish. He goes in the closet and he wets my shoes. <laughs> It's a German dog. I showed him a picture of Hitler. He raised his front paw. I bet nobody can guess how old I am. Looking at me, you could never realize how old I am. You know that I was a busboy at the Last Supper. I go way back. And I was there. That's right. My grandfather intended the Last Supper. You couldn't see his picture because he wasn't sitting at the head table. He was sitting at table four, and he won the centerpiece, and I was there. I had another grandfather, Shlom Exit. He was half Baptist and half Jewish. He was circumcised underwater, and I was there. Cain, whose wife divorced him because he wasn't able, and I was there too. You wouldn't believe this. You know, most comedians, when they go on, you know, after a show and you want to talk to them, they can't open up their mouth because they're very self-conscious about themselves. I'll tell you the truth, I'm so self-conscious. If somebody would walk over to me after a show, I can't open up my mouth. Like last week, I passed a football game and I saw the players going to a huddle, so I thought they were talking about me. <laughs> so I went to the psychiatrist, I says, what is it? He said, it's $100 a visit. I says, I'll tell you the truth, for $100, I don't visit, I move in. Then he takes out an ink blot, he says, what do you see? I said, I see that you need a new fountain pen. I figure for $100, I'll drive him crazy. He says to me, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? I says, I want $99 change. He says, I think I know your problem, you hate your sister. I says, I'll be honest with you, I haven't got a sister. He says, you're not helping me if you don't cooperate. <laughs> That's my best joke. Hmm? Okay, Jackie. Have a, have a seat over there. Uh, maybe, uh, Dave, you could hand him the microphone over there next to you. The mic. There you go. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, now, uh, Jackie, uh, uh, last summer I went up to the uh, Raleigh Hotel, and that's one of the the uh, old the greats up there in the Certainly Catskills, is, right? right? And uh, now you, you've been playing the Catskills for uh, several years? I've or? been playing the Catskills for quite a few number of years, but at the present time, I'm not working at Catskills. I, uh, I am working at Catskills, but not in shows. I pick up dead animals on a true way. <laughs> <laughs> now, there have been some uh, changes in the Catskills over the years, right? You've noticed? Oh, there's a lot of changes. There's young comedians coming up, and the there's no question about the changes. There isn't too many places you can play today. That's all trouble. Yeah. You can count them on your fingers how, how many places there is in the Catskill Mountains. Well, I think uh, they have, uh, there are, there are uh, people don't know how to laugh anymore. You, you have a guy like uh, Dave who just sits there, and I think if you had somebody like him uh, in your <laughs> audience, you wouldn't, uh, you know, you'd probably want to quit the, the whole business. Uh, all yeah. right, just relax, David. But uh, I'll be honest, I worked last month, I worked at the Catskill Mountains with Tom Jones. Right. And uh, he opened up the show and he sang, For all the girls I loved before, 
right? For those who come knocking at my door, please be a good sport. Send me the medical report from all those girls I loved before. <laughs> Oh, that's a little blue for uh, we we like to usually keep the show, uh, but okay, but it, 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 all right because it was it was subtle enough I think that uh, we can say oh, that. that was Tom Jones. He sang the song that I was with him at the time. Well, now a lot of the uh, uh, comedians uh, today they they always feel they have to work dirty and they, do, do you? Think no, absolutely that not. Uh, There's no, nothing to be funny to be dirty. The idea is to be clean and, and character-wise and, and have talent that you, doesn't, you don't have to do no dirty jokes. I don't believe in dirty jokes, I'll be honest. I don't believe in sex. I don't believe in it. That's why I look like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, Mr. Have, have, Mr. Gleason always wanted a very clean show. He said he that. He wanted yes, clean. Uh, and it was. Mm -hmm. and, and he stuck with that all the way through, uh, even yes. when he did uh, his movies later in life, and uh, he always uh, maintained the... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, well, perhaps he didn't have as much control of the movies, but he had complete control over our show. He ran the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and now, have, have you two ever attempted a, a, a comedy or, or a stand up? Uh, you know, I, no. No, we have enough laughs at home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, is, have you uh, been up to the Catskills at all uh, over the years uh, to, to see any of the. No, honestly, I haven't. I haven't. No, we we have. It's really, uh, it's really something because even yeah. though it has changed, there still are comedians that uh, that tell the types of jokes that uh, Jackie oh, tells. And absolutely, that. but most of them are really uh, blue jokes. It's not really in good taste. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. They seem to get a lot of laughs with it. Uh, this generation, they go for this younger generation, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't see it really. That's why I admire Jackie Mason when he does a show. He does nothing blue in his material. And he's a star on Broadway. And you're, uh, he's a friend of yours, too? I happen to be a standby, especially when he has a couple of girls I stand by. Okay. <laughs> the closest I ever got to the uh, Adirondacks, when I first came to New York in 1952, uh, I went up to Moody's, Connecticut, to Banner Lodge, and did The Moon is Blue. And that was my extent in the, in the Borscht Belt, as you were. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's. Uh, uh, we now have another uh, person uh, who is uh, talking about comedy, uh, Samson St. Clair, and he's uh, he's starring in uh, Shiva, and it's a, a move. Uh, it's a play about uh, Joan Rivers uh, uh, in recent in recent times, and it's playing Thursdays and Sundays at the St. Francis Horn Community Center in Regal Park. And uh, he's going to uh, perform a scene from that uh, uh, now, please. The author claims I had dinner with him. I made statements to the effect that I wished my husband were dead. This is impossible. On the night that the article claimed I had you know, with the author in Los Angeles. I was not in Los Angeles. I was not even in the United States. I was in an emergency room in a hospital in Dublin with my late husband, Edgar Rosenberg, because he had been taken ill during the night. The author, the author also claims that he came to my house as an invited guest during my husband's shiver. <coughs> which is the Jewish period of mourning after a funeral, and states that I went around screaming obscenities about my late husband, that I boasted about Gatorade, and that I ordered my publicist to use this tragic event for my own personal career advantages. <laughs> this is a total pack of evil, vicious, sick lies. I do not understand the total lack of humanity on the part of Gentlemen's Quarterly to publish such an attack on my family, or what is left of my family. Each day for my daughter and me is a struggle to get through. This is a vicious article which is ripped off in an emotional wound which has just barely started to heal. We are still in a state of deep grief over the totally unexpected <coughs> loss of my late husband. It's horror that this article has brought both to my daughter, who is so young and vulnerable, 
and to me is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Samson, if you can just grab the microphone from. Uh, now, uh, to tell you the truth, when we, uh, when uh, the producers told me that uh, they were going to have uh, somebody on doing a Joan Rivers play, I expected uh, a guy with the uh, wig and the the. Uh, you know, with the, all the hair. Uh, well, yeah, we're we're trying to do something uh, a little different. You're doing uh, something different now. Yeah, uh, jo Joan has many facets, of course, to her character, her personality. The scene and that we just saw now, that was uh, uh, from? This uh, is taken from a, a press conference that Joan held after an article in Gentleman's Quarterly appeared, um, uh, during which an, a pseudonymous author named Bert Hacker uh, claimed to have had dinner with Joan and uh, published what, what we all believe to be a, a pack of evil, vicious, and sick lies. Mm -hmm. So, the, and the play, uh, so that's in the play, and... The uh, play, Shiva, yes, A Time And for you Healing. don't do, uh, so do you do routines from uh, Joan Rivers as well, or...? There are moments from happier times, yes, and it's told primarily in flashbacks. Uh, it begins with uh, the news of Edgar's death, and then goes up to the point where this article appeared. And uh, it details some of the happier moments, and and some of the sad times. One time, uh, David and I were watching the uh, show uh, that Joan Rivers was hosting, The Late Show, and, uh, and Joan Rivers is very uh, funny because uh, Dave even uh, laughed at some of the jokes, which uh, you usually don't see Dave doing. Excuse yeah. me, this man laughed? That, uh, David, and uh, you don't I, even, you probably don't even remember, I or you don't want to remember. Okay, well. Uh, all right. Well, maybe uh, maybe we'll all go and see that play, uh, Samson St. Clair. That's uh, at the St. Francis Horn Community Center in Rigo Park. That's in Rigo Park, yes. Okay. And if they want any information about the show, they can call um, Beyond Vaudeville? Okay, yeah. It, it, you can call us at 675-RASH, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll give you information on where that is uh, appearing. Uh, Jackie, did you ever work with the... Uh, John Rivers or any? Uh... Uh, no, uh, as a matter of fact, I did have a session uh, next door where John Rivers used to go in quite often. I, uh, the session in the men's room off Broadway. Oh. And, uh, Is that a club? Quite often. It was a club. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, I guess uh, we still have some time left, and I think that uh, we owe it to uh, the Honeymooners fans to find out uh, what. Um, you know, uh, what, what the uh, Honeymooners are, are up to, the uh, Art Carney, and uh, uh, what, uh, anything new uh, on, on those fronts, or? Well, last March, most of us were summoned to Hollywood to uh, be part of a celebrity wake for Jackie Gleason, which is part of a two-hour CBS television show, which I, I expect will go on the air next fall. Okay. And it was nice to see Art and Audrey and uh, Mrs. Gleason, who is Marilyn Taylor Gleason, and her sister June Taylor, who did all you know all the dances on the show. June was the choreographer, mm -hmm. and there were many people. Oh, George Petrie, whom we often call the Fifth Honeymooner, because he played so many parts. He was on every week playing a different sort of part. He was there with his wife, who'd been on the show too, and uh, oh, Eddie Hanley, who had done many parts with us, and uh, it was wonderful to see so so many old friends. And now there's a whole new uh, generation seeing the Honeymooners for the first time, uh, seeing the, uh, the the shows that have been running for years, but also a whole bunch of new shows or, or new old shows are out. The Lost Episodes. And uh, mm -hmm. those are, are showing regularly all around the country. All around uh, the country, um, in the New York area, Sunday nights on Channel 11. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, uh, when we had Al Lewis on, he mentioned that uh, The Monsters has been in reruns uh, ever since uh, the show went off the air and it's on all over the world, then uh, I guess The Honeymooners, uh, too, is, uh, is just as popular uh, all over? Well, um, not really. You see, uh, The Munsters had years and years and years of shows on film. We had only the 39 half hours that were considered film, even though they were not. They were the Dumont Electronic Cam system, which was a forerunner of tape. But that was all that could be shown for years and years, and, and so we didn't have a, a multitude of them the way they did, you know, the Munsters. I was chatting with a uh, fellow the other night in Sardis and, uh, from Australia, and he said, oh, certainly I remember the Honeymooners. We have a Honeymooners in Australia. So, so 
glad to hear that. But, and uh, and then the uh, there was the song, the honeymooners song that came out a little while ago, and uh, the show just uh, it it just won't go away. People really <laughs> love that I'm, show. I'm glad it won't go away. <laughs> and uh, it, but we're very 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 happy to have you on here. Uh, Thank you. Um, Mr. Charles, anything new for the uh, lambs are coming up that... Uh... Well, nothing. Uh, I guess the next activity that we have, we're have, taking a group out to entertain uh, the uh, people at the Actors Fund home in uh, Englewood, New, New Jersey. Jersey. Mm -hmm. we, do, we do a picnic party there and show uh, on a Saturday afternoon every summer. And these are retired uh, actresses, yes. actors, and mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, retired to the Actors Fund home in Englewood, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It's a very important charity, Frank. Yes, mm -hmm. it is a very important charity, particularly. Uh, they, they handle many things, and they have uh, many demands on, on the Actors Fund now, particularly since, uh, unhappily, with AIDS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just, uh, just opened this past year a nursing home adjacent to the retirement home. It's so beautiful that, uh, too, really beautiful. When people get uh, infirm, they can move next door and they will not leave their friends. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, think, uh, I don't think you two are ever gonna end up there because you're keeping <laughs> really active and uh, uh, we hope to hear and see a lot more of you in, in the future. And uh, uh, Jackie, Jason, uh, any uh, places we can see you or what's coming up uh, down the road? Uh, well, down the road, I expect to be at the International Atlantic City. Okay. I'm very happy. I, someone give me a booking, and this is the greatest thrill of my life. I'm a guy that never made it. Maybe this will be my opportunity that I'll make it. As a matter of fact, I call myself Exit because I want to see my name in lights. That's <laughs> the reason I see Exit. <laughs> okay. And, uh, uh, uh Sam, uh, may uh, I interrupt? Uh, AGVA, I was booked uh, many times to do that home in Englewood, by the way. Mm. It's a wonderful, beautiful place. Yes. I was there several times. Yes. Okay, and uh, Samson, we, we know where we can see your show. Uh, yes, it's uh, the St. Francis Horn uh, Recreation Center in Rigo Park, Queens. Okay, and now we're going to have a closing song, and uh, uh, it's uh, Jim Neighbors, and he's doing uh, uh, Born Free, and... Uh, and uh, thank you uh, very much for watching, and uh, that, that's all for tonight. Tune in uh, next week, and please call 675-RASH. Uh,